predicting the products in substitution and elimination reactions. Sometimes you get a mixture of mechanisms, like when you treat a secondary alkyl halide with a reagent like sodium hydroxide. Your major product is the Zaitsev E2. A minor product is the Hoffman E2, and another minor product is SN2. On the other hand, sometimes you only get one product, like when you treat a tertiary alkyl halide with sodium methoxide. You only get a single E2 product. So how do you know? There are three steps. The first is to determine the function of the reagent. Is it a nucleophile or a base or both? Is it strong or is it weak? Step two, analyze the substrate. Also consider solvent and temperature to determine the expected mechanisms. For instance, what is the degree of substitution in the substrate? Does the substrate have a good leaving group or a bad leaving group? Step three is to consider any relevant regiochemical, that is, is it Zaitsev or is it Hoffman, and stereochemical, R, S, E, Z, cis-trans, things that are going on. When you're looking at the reagent, if it's a strong nucleophile, that favors SN2. A strong base favors E2. A weak nucleophile favors SN1, and a weak base favors E1. Reagents that are strong bases and pretty much non-nucleophiles. Hydride, which you would get from sodium hydride. DBN and DBU, although these are both very bulky. And we should also add tert butoxide. Even though it has an oxyanion, which would make it a strong nucleophile, it's too sterically bulky to do nucleophilic attack. So oxyanions are both strong base and strong nucleophile. You should expect a mixture of SN2 and E2. The ratio of SN2 and E2 products will be determined by the degree of substitution of the substrate. If you have something that is pretty much a nucleophile only, that favors SN2, unless your substrate is tertiary in which case it's going to go SN1. This includes iodide, bromide, chloride, anything with sulfur in it. Things that are both weak bases and weak nucleophiles include neutral oxygens, water, and alcohols. Assuming our substrate has a good leaving group, the next question we ask ourselves, is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? In other words, what's the degree of substitution in the substrate? If you have something, if your reagent is a strong base, regardless of whether your substrate is primary, secondary, or tertiary, you will always get E2 and nothing but E2. If you have something with an oxyanion in it, in other words, a strong base, strong nucleophile, we're talking sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, sodium ethoxide, those alkoxide ions are both a strong base and a strong nucleophile. For a primary substrate, you get an 80-20 mixture of SN2 to E2. In a secondary substrate, the E2 dominates and SN2 is a minor product. In a tertiary substrate, SN2 is sterically prohibited, so we get E2 only. If our reagent is a nucleophile only, like a halide ion, We'll get SN2 for primary and secondary substrates, and we'll get SN1 for a tertiary substrate where SN2 is sterically prevented. If you have a substrate, I'm sorry, if you have a reagent that is both a weak base and a weak nucleophile, the first step is loss of a leaving group. That means it's synthetically not practical to try to do these with primary substrates 
or secondary substrates. With tertiary substrates, you get a mixture of SN1 and E1. Now, if you do it at high temperature, you'll favor the E1 product, and at low temperature, you'll favor the SN1 product. This table looks like a lot to remember, but go systematically and remember your mechanisms. Once you've determined what mechanism will be followed, then you can evaluate the regiochemical and stereochemical outcome. Regiochemical means which constitutional isomer are you going to get? Zaitsev or Hoffman in this case. Stereochemistry means which stereoisomer are you going to get? Cistrans, EZ, RS. One way to do it is to draw all possible outcomes and then select the ones that are valid based on the mechanism. For instance, when we're talking about SN2, regiochemically speaking, the nucleophile attacks the alpha carbon and then the leaving group leaves. Stereochemically speaking, you get inversion of configuration. R switches to S, S switches to R. Here, a lone pair in a bromide ion performs nucleophilic attack on the alpha carbon of a secondary alkyl halide. The chloride leaves. We get a secondary alkyl bromide with inversion of configuration. We also get a chloride ion. The sodium is a spectator. For E2, the regiochemical consideration is you get Zaitsev unless you're using a bulky base like tert butoxide. So if our base is NaOH, NaOME, sodium methoxide, or NaOET, sodium ethoxide, we're going to get the Zaitsev product. We'll get the Hoffman product, the less substituted alkene, if our base is tert butoxide. Remember that E2 reactions are stereoselective. Trans is favored over cis. So in this situation, trans alkene will be your major product. You will still get some cis. Remember also that when there is only a single beta proton, as in the case here, this is our alpha carbon, this is our beta carbon, the beta proton is implied, here it is. Right now there's a 60 degree torsion angle between the beta proton and the leaving group, X. We need there to be a 180 degree torsion angle. In other words, the beta proton must be anti-periplanar to the leaving group. In this case, the Z isomer is not formed, but the E isomer is formed exclusively. And this is not to say that it's always Z or always E. It's one or the other, depending on whichever one goes through the anti-periplanar beta proton rotational configuration. So to determine which of these isomers is formed, you rotate the beta carbon 120 degrees in one direction to make the beta proton 180 degrees from the leaving group. This can be easily done using Newman projections. Here we've got a secondary alkyl bromide being treated with sodium hydroxide. Our first step is to analyze the reagent. Pause your video, answer, and then resume. So our reagent is sodium hydroxide, which is really 
a sodium ion, a spectator ion, and a hydroxide ion. It's the hydroxide ion that has the lone pairs that will, where the curved arrows for the mechanism will start. It is both a strong base and a strong nucleophile. Strong base says E2. Strong nucleophile says SN2. So B and D. Or choice E. Next step is to consider the substrate. Pause. Work. Resume. This is our substrate. It's a secondary alkyl halide. Going back to our table, the secondary alkyl halide can go via both SN2 and E2, but E2 is favored by approximately 70-30. So we'll get 70% E2, and we'll get about 30% SN2. Choice B. So, let's draw the E2 products and the SN2 products, or product. First, let's do a little rotation. 120 degrees. Let's bring the methyl group to where the bromine is. The bromine will go to where the H is, and the H will go to where the methyl group is. This gives us the kind of picture we're more used to looking at in terms of our zigzag bond line structure. In any case, E2 product, that means we're going to make an alkene, which means we have to eliminate a beta proton. Now, we've got two beta protons here and three beta protons here. Eliminating one of these would be Zaitsev, and eliminating one of these would give us the Hoffman product. What determines Zaitsev versus Hoffman? The bulkiness of the base. Hydroxide is non-bulky. Which means we're going to get Zaitsev products. This means our hydroxide is going to take one of these two beta protons, whichever one is 180 degrees from the bromide. So since the bromide is down and on a dash, we want the beta proton that's up and on a wedge. So we get proton transfer and loss of a leaving group. And so the transalkene is our major product. However, if we started out with the initial rotational configuration, then our hydroxide would attack the other beta proton here. And so we will also get some cis product. So our major E2 product is the transalkene. Our minor E2 product is the cisalkene. Both are Zaitsev because hydroxide is a non-bulky base. But we'll also get 30% or so of an SN2 product. In SN2, the hydroxide acts as a nucleophile, does backside attack on the alpha carbon, and the leaving group leaves. So the SN2 product is an alcohol, 
with inversion of configuration, also a minor product. This may seem complicated, but you can achieve it with practice. Practice is essential. First ask yourself, is the reagent a base or a nucleophile? Is it strong or weak? Then ask yourself about the substrate. Does its degree of substitution say anything about the mechanism? Once you've got the mechanism, draw the mechanism. And if you follow the steps correctly, you will figure out the correct outcomes.